Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we are going to look at Ronnie O'Sullivan versus Pan Shao Ting. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the channel, you'll know that I recently did a Jeanette Lee versus Pan Shao Ting video and it got very good reviews. A lot of people were interested in seeing more. So this one should be interesting because uh, if you guys don't know, Ronnie O'Sullivan is considered one of the best snooker players in the world. And um, here he's playing nine ball in an exhibition in China against Pan Shao Ting, who is considered one of the best female players in the world. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now Pan has a really good break. Um, sometimes she breaks about 80% of her power and sometimes she gives it 100%, but she has good control just about any way she decides to break. And that's pretty much her power break. Anytime you see her rear foot come off the floor, uh, that's her power break. And you'll also see her switch up from left to right, given uh, different situations, which we'll talk about later. So here, uh, Pan made two balls on the break, I believe. She's always going to make the wing ball. And I think that was an offensive bank shot. I think it was just a bad shot. Uh, this early in the match, a lot of times players are a little nervous. They're getting used to the table. They're getting used to the crowd, which brings up a point. I want you guys to look at the background. There's probably a thousand people in this arena. And a couple things you should know about them. One, um, they know when to be quiet. They know when to applaud. And they are there to watch a pool game and there's got to be I'd say 70% of the audience can't even see the table uh, we're gonna see a shot later of the arena and there's no monitors or anything they just want to be there that's how big pool is and how big um, Pan Xiaoting is in China so we saw um, yeah Ronnie missed a very easy shot on the one ball but left Pan safe and she tried to use reverse English to come back to hit that one. I'm not sure how much effort she gave it because hitting it didn't gain anything for her. Uh, she's actually better off with Ronnie having to play this safe. So Ronnie plays a pretty decent safe when you consider that the one ball isn't makeable from there, but Pan can certainly hit it. So she's going to take a swat at it. So that was, I know to a lot of amateurs that looked like a cross side, um, I'm sorry, cross corner bank shot. Uh, that was a defensive shot. And she's left Ronnie a little close to the rail. So he's going to have no trouble uh, kicking this ball. Ronnie is um, pretty good at just about all Q sports. He does a lot of exhibitions other than playing snooker. And um, he's going to not have a difficult time at all. Uh, with those shots where you leave a safety close to the rail. Now Pan has a um, cut shot here which is makeable. So she's going to try to get back down table to get position on the three ball. She's looking to see just how much of a cut she has to make. But um, it's the only problem she has here is that she's on the rail. You never want to be on the rail. But she should be okay as far as um, making this shot. Now you notice that Pan, she jacks up the cue a little bit and puts her chin all the way down. I mean, it's literally touching her chin. This is not necessarily a position you guys want to try to emulate. Um, it is the way a lot of players shoot. They get their heads all the way down on the cue. But it is certainly um, not commonplace to have the cue resting on your chin or your chin resting on the cue. So here she's going to play the three down table. She plays a lot of these longer shots. She actually puts a little bit of stun on this uh, to get out for this four ball. And playing this shot, this can actually create a problem. She's um, not straight in on the four, which you don't want to be, but she's going to have to nudge this six ball. So you don't like to nudge balls that are in the middle of the table towards the rail. So that's a no-no. And this is going to be followed by another problem because all she has to do is run this five ball down in the corner. She will still have a shot on the six, but she tries to go over and back. And as a result, ends up rattling the ball. 
Anytime you have to hit the ball harder than necessary, it's probably a bad idea. So if she had just taken what the table had given her, which was to play the five ball in the corner, come out near the middle of the table, cut the four ball, I'm sorry, the cut the six ball down into the corner pocket, she would have had natural position on the eight and she would have been out on the rack. But because of that mistake, uh, Ronnie's going to be out. So they're playing alternating breaks and Ronnie, I want you guys to notice something. He started out uh, using a pool cue and I'll point it out to you later, but he later goes to a snooker cue. Now, I think what happened was he missed that early shot on the one ball and you saw that he was giving his cue a lot of attention. That's when I noticed that he was using a pool cue. The difference between a pool cue and a snooker cue primarily is the tip is smaller on a snooker cue, but also tends to have a brass ferrule. So he, um, I think after that first rack, he decided to go with the cue that he's most accustomed to having in his hand. So here he's going to break. He's also going to break from the um, left side. You see, he was trying to make up his mind which side he wanted to go from. And he does something unique. Well, it would be unique for pool players, but he doesn't use a rail bridge. He's he's breaking um, from about a I guess about eight inches off of the rail, like he was using a Predator BK two BK three maybe. So now he's got the um, he's got the snooker cue in his hand, and he'll go to work here. But I'm not sure he left himself a shot. So he may end up playing a safety here. So yeah, he rolls it out, makes a nice play, hiding pan behind the red ball there. So she's going to have to take some kind of um, two rail kick shot. You can see there, that is a snooker cue he's got there. So she's going to make a two rail kick shot here. And if there's a weakness in Pan's game, it's, it's two areas. One, balls that are on the rail. And two, two rail kick shots. She didn't even bother to measure this one out. Uh, she's just going to kick at it. And you see she totally missed the two ball by about four or five inches. I found I watch a lot of her matches and I've found that she has difficulty with those two rail kick shots, even when... She does a parallel shift. Uh, she doesn't get the, the right amount of English on the shot. And sometimes it's the fact that you're on a new table. You're not familiar with the speed of the felt. But she came not even close to making that one. So here Ronnie is going to have a layup on the two ball. And then he's going to um, most likely play this combination, which is not what's recommended. But Ronnie is probably um, pretty good at combination shots. These balls must look like basketballs to him after playing snooker 8, 10 hours a day. So um, the, we lost some of our footage there. So Ronnie's actually at the end of this run. And he's just going to finish out this rack. But the um, the position he ended up playing, he did follow it and then played the, um, the three in the corner pocket to work his way back around the table. On this shot, he'll just go up and back and um, you know, get a decent position on the uh, two ball. After, I'm sorry, the nine ball. This is not the best way to play that shot. Uh, I'm not sure if he was tending, intending on playing it in our lower left-hand corner pocket, but that was not the best way to play that shot. And we'll get back to Ronnie um, uh, playing some exotic position play a little bit later. Uh, you'll see some situations where he should have done things differently, but he has his own way of getting things done. So here you see that Pan is still with the power break. She's going to make the wing ball just 90% of not 100% of the time. And 
So she's at the table now. I think she only made one ball, which would have been the wing ball. The one ball came short of the side pocket. So she's checking out the table here. I'm thinking that the way these balls are clustered up, she's not going to want to try to run them out at this point. She's going to play a safety here. And one of the interesting things to me is there's about a thousand people, not joking, in that audience. And they are cold silent. I mean, there's not, <laughs> you could hear a dime drop in there. And I think just that's just amazing uh, that the audience has that much respect for the game. That there's no one talking while they're shooting. And, um, and they do understand when to applaud and when somebody does something good. And occasionally you'll hear some applause when somebody did something that appeared to be good but wasn't really a good thing like pan making the nine ball by mistake but other than that it's a pretty educated audience so here's pretty much the same shot ronnie had before he's going to come off the rail and hit this ball from behind he's very good at that as weak as pan is at two rail kick shots ronnie is doubly stronger than than most guys and um, played a decent safe on Pan here she's going to run over and get her jump cue so Pan is um, a little weak at two real kick shots but she's very strong at jump shots now she has some decisions to make here do you just try to hit the ball solid or do you try to play it in the side or in the corner pocket uh, a lot of players are just going to try to hit this ball solid and hope something good happens because there's not really a run out on the table so even if she tried to make it in the side she's giving herself a smaller target also if she makes it she's not out from there so she's really just looking to hit this ball and see what happens so she makes a solid hit decides to drive it into the three which was actually a pretty good idea so um, she left Ronnie uh, a long shot here and I think he's going to just play a safety so he plays a beautiful safety um, putting her cue ball at one end of the table and the object ball at the other end the only problem with the safety is she's so close to the rail she's not going to have any trouble kicking this but look at the bottom of the screen and look where the two ball is down here this um this two ball doesn't really give you a shot so neither one is in a hurry to have to um make this one ball at this point so the only time you're going to worry about really making that one is if you're going to run out and neither one is going to run out from there with that two ball where it is so now ronnie has a shot where he might be able to hit the one and come around the table. I think that's what he's looking at here. So the shot is actually, you play the one in the top right corner pocket, you come off two rails and come down table and you might have a combination shot down this end. This is the most thought you'll see Ronnie give a shot. He's usually down on it and shooting away but he's trying to figure out that um, that two ball position so he plays another safety and he leaves Pan a long cut shot she can make this 90 times out of 100 but do you get on the two and that's what you want to look at so here what you do is you play the two ball as a safety shot um, unless you think you can make that combination you're getting position to play safe and a lot of guys intermediate and beginner players don't understand that concept they think the object here is to put a ball in the pocket but if you play to make the one then you can play a safety on the two ball now I think she legitimately tried to make that because she would have had an easy safety to play on the two ball but um, looks like she ran into the eight and as a result ended up with nothing. So Ronnie is down there, um, you know, all day he's going to 
probably make this and see if he can make the combination. He's more likely to shoot the combination shot than she is. So he plays a little bit more aggressively at this point, especially if he's up in games. So he's looking to see how he can cut this in. If you guys saw my video on combination shots, one of the things that I stress other than avoiding combination shots is to know where all the balls are going to go. Now he had already figured that the two ball was going to go down table. So he sent the cue ball down table with it, but I'm 99% sure he didn't think it was going to end up in that side pocket. So he kind of overhit it, probably had to in order to make that ball. But now he's, um, he's got a kick at this three ball. So he does a nice job kicking that three ball in. So rather than play the angle, what Ronnie did was he went up with right hand English to spin off the rail. So if you want to back up a couple seconds, you'll see that he shot it straight up table with the right hand English, uh, which is a little bit more difficult to judge, but it's the only way he, get, he could get to it because he had to clear the other ball. He couldn't play the precise angle that was needed to make the shot. And guys, avoid getting this casual about taking a shot. Just pick up the bridge. So here we can take a look at Ronnie's break. You can see it's almost like he's not sure how he wants to break. He's got his bridge kind of on the side of the table. Also, watch what he does with his cue. You see him throw his cue up in the air. Now, if an amateur did this, we'd say, oh my God, you got terrible form. But if you watch the break again, he does follow through. He just doesn't keep the cue down on the table. He follows through and then he moves the cue up as if the other balls are going to come down so fast that they might hit his cue. So he does follow through on the shot even though he throws his cue up at the end of the shot. So here he's playing the 2-3 combination, which was probably a bad idea. Combination shots are enough trouble and now you're throwing another ball into the mix by playing off the eight. I don't think he intended to play off the eight, but there are too many things going in too many different directions to play that shot. But he had limited options. So here Pan, she can see that too from where she is. I know it looks like the eight is blocking it, but she can see the edge of it if she comes off the rail first, I think. So that's what she was measuring. Where am I going to be? If I come off that rail, she's going to put low left English on this to spin the cue ball towards the two after coming off the rail. So she makes contact with the two and she lucks the eight in the side pocket and it's bad luck. <laughs> so sometimes you get a ball in when you're not trying and it hurts you and this is one of those one of those situations and if you're leaving somebody safe guys this is the way to do it put the object ball in the center of the table especially when you know they have trouble with um, two rail kick shots now her one rail kick shot is not bad at all so she's gonna hit this ball and hit hit it well but at the same time she's gonna leave the table um, pretty wide open even though she did not leave Ronnie a shot so we'll see if Ronnie tries to cut this in. It would be a back cut. I'm thinking you play safe here right back at her. But he he goes and cuts it in. So that was a nice back cut. He had to put right hand English on that to throw the two ball to the left. And he's just going to tap this three in. He'll be right there on the four. He hadn't even bothered to look at the layout of the table. Which is a common occurrence with people that play at this level if the balls are not clustered up they're not on any rails they're just laying on the table a lot of times you'll just run them off you know you can get position on them and you don't pick a pattern which is a bad habit by the way you should work on finding a pattern either way so even though the balls are makeable from just about anywhere find yourself a pattern so you don't do something silly along the way Now, I usually edit out these downtime situations here, but 
there's something to be learned here so for the next 60 seconds let me give you some quick information this is in 2019 obviously it's pre COVID-19 and um, Pan is taking a bathroom break which is fine uh, <laughs> she's freezing Ronnie out a little bit you can see how uncomfortable he is uh, just sitting there and waiting for her but I am going to show you what happens when Pan returns and she makes a new entrance actually from a psychological standpoint it's a big benefit to her but look at this room there's probably a thousand people there I don't see any monitors there might be monitors but a lot of these people can barely see the table if they can see it at all pool is that big in China Pan is considered one of the most popular athletes, not female athletes, one of the most popular athletes in China. Imagine a situation where Shane would be more recognizable than LeBron James for some people. It just doesn't happen in the United States. Pool around the world, internationally, in Asia and Europe, is the only thing saving our game right now. We need to get our game back on track because the US could never pull this off. So Pan is breaking from the right side now. I don't know if she saw something in the rack that she wanted to change. She's been making a ball on the break but she switches sides and normally I would switch sides depending on where uh, the dark wing ball was. So if there was a six on one side or the other or an eight on one side or the other I would change sides and shoot that but um, it looked like the four ball was the wing ball and there's no reason to switch sides just for the four ball so she, maybe it was just variety but she um, uh, she does make three balls on the break so there was something she saw that said hey switch sides uh, even though you're making a ball on the break and and give it a go so here she's probably going to have to play a safe. If she could get to that one somehow, she's out, but she's not going to get to it. I mean, and she's going to be able to hit it, obviously, but um, she's going to have to play a safe. And the problem with making three balls on the break, you don't have her anywhere to hide behind. You know, a lot of times we're watching matches on YouTube and we see them break and run, break and run, break and run. The reality is... A lot of your breaks, guys, uh, do not end with you running a rack because you don't have a shot on that first ball. So you're playing a safety, and you need to play a good safety. Now, did she try to make that two ball? Probably. Uh, she, she definitely was trying to come off of that one to get to that two and almost put it in the pocket, which I don't have any problem with that shot. She really didn't have anywhere to hide the one ball. So why not be aggressive in that situation? So Ronnie's going to have a couple layups here. Actually, that position on the five, what he should be doing here, playing right-hand English, coming off of two rails, not four, and uh, leaving himself in the middle of the table where he could actually hit the five ball. Uh, but he decides to go off of four rails, slams the ball around the table hoping something good happens and something bad happened. So he gets lucky and leaves Pan a safety, but look where that nine ball is sitting. So she very easily could have ended up kicking at this five ball and making the nine. So he had a tough shot on the five if he left it in the middle of the table, but at least he would have been able to, been able to play a legitimate safety and um, giving himself an opportunity to even make the five ball rather than what he ended up doing. So now Pan is going to try to kick this ball and she's looking to see what happens with that nine ball if she kicks it. If I kick it here, if I hit it here, what's going to happen? So notice guys, she's not just intending to hit the ball. She wants to know what's going to happen after she hits it. A lot of amateurs are just happy with hitting the ball. You're not just hitting the ball. Find out what might happen for you. 
So she is going to kick at this. It is the five ball and hopefully make the nine, which is sitting in the pocket. So nothing good happens. Only bad things happen. So this is an important turning point in the game, in the match. Ronnie is up 4-0. He's got ball in hand. The nine ball is sitting in the pocket. I don't even think he pays attention to the fact that the nine ball is sitting in the pocket because the five nine is you're out. But he plays this shot with high right hand English, comes off with two rails. That's not the way you would play it. He's going to shoot this six with another force follow to come off with three rails to get on this seven. At this point, Ronnie is just showing off. So now he's going to play this with low right hand English to play the seven in the corner here and he missed it. So what do you think is going to happen here? So you're up 4-0 and you decide to show off because you've got a little bit of a lead and it backfires on you and Pan is going to, here's a spoiler alert, make the 7 and then make the 9 and she's <laughs> going to be out. Uh, so guys, when you're playing 9 ball at this level I would say at any level, don't mess around. At this level, either one of them can run rack after rack after rack of nine ball. So you got to be careful. A 4-0 lead in a game of nine ball is like a seven point lead in an NBA game with two minutes left. A couple three pointers and next thing you know, you're fighting for your life. So be careful with this um, just because you're up, especially you high-ranked players. That's a common mistake that high-ranked players will make is to be up a couple games and then start showing off. So be careful about that, guys. So when Pan switched sides last time on her break, it probably wasn't any flaws in the rack. I mean, they're very meticulous about racking. They're using a magic rack here. Sometimes you'll see gaps in the rack and you'll break from the side where the gap is. But there are no gaps in that rack. Um, so she may have just switched sides to get more power out of her break. But Ronnie's staying on the same side and he'll make the wing ball. Everybody's going to make the wing ball and nine ball these days. I challenge people to miss the wing ball. Shoot from the side and miss the wing ball. <laughs> Actually, you, if you're off a couple inches, you will miss it. But at this level, nobody's missing the wing ball. They may scratch after they make it, but they're they're not going to miss the wing ball. And um, he actually rattled it in. The one ball is going to come down table from where you broke from each and every time unless it goes in that side pocket. So if you can get the cue ball down table with you, uh, you're well ahead of the game. The um, The two is in the pocket. He's going to have a, um, a bank shot here on the three, which was an ill-advised shot. And Pan is going to have control of the table. Guys, you can go match after match after match. You can watch five matches and not watch anybody make a, um offensive bank shot. So that was a shot. Again, it's an exhibition. Ronnie might be um, a little bit more aggressive than he would have been in a legitimate um game for a big prize but that's not a shot you want to take that's the kind of shot that leads to the other guy running out and I know a lot of amateurs love to bank the shot and they want to shoot bank shots they want to see videos on bank shots oh I want to play bank show me how to bank give me the math for bank I'm parallel shifting now and um, here's the math with it no <laughs> in the real world you play good position so you don't have to shoot bank shots. And somebody leaves you a bank shot and you play a safety. I'm sorry, guys. Bank shots are not a big part of pool. There is a game called Bank Pool. If you want to watch guys bank, the best in the world at banking, uh, you can watch guys bank. But um, at this level, this is what bank shots get you. They get you a seat while you watch somebody like Pan run out on you and close the gap in the lead that you built up. So Pan uses my favorite position play. Comes off with three rails. 
it looks like she could stun this seven, but it's not a good stun shot. It just moves the cue ball towards the eight too close. So you draw this off the rail here, put a little bit of reverse English on it so you don't move closer to the eight, but further from the eight. And you'll see she'll just shoot a little draw here and she will be out. So this is going to put the race, which I believe is a race to seven, at four to two, where we were at four to zero. Guess where it all fell apart, guys? When Ronnie turned into a barbax banger and started uh, slamming those uh, last four balls around the table. So just keep that in mind, guys. In, in a lot of games, as you move up, you might find yourself just sitting in the chair for 20 minutes while you watch your opponent run rack after rack. Or you get up to try to get out of a position, um, a safety spot, and then you go and sit back down while they start running more and more balls. So here it looks like Ronnie might get to get out of his chair for a moment because Pan is going to play a safety here. And you want to come behind these three balls on our right hand side. You've got a target rich environment over there guys. If you don't get behind the nine you're going to get behind the three or the seven. So you go to that part of the table and then it doesn't even matter where you leave your object ball. So anytime you can hide behind balls you want to do that. Ronnie does not have a shot here. When I say he doesn't have a shot, he can't jump this, he can't kick it. There's no three rail path that gets you to this two ball. He's um, he's going to try to kick at it, but the only way, the only way to hit that two ball would be to mass a off, off this short rail, change the, um, the spin on the cue ball, and hope that you can um, put enough reverse spin on it to hit that two. And I think he did put some reverse on it, but he certainly did not mass a it. So he had zero chance of making that ball. So what's going to happen here is Pan is going to have ball in hand. You see she has a layup on the two ball, but she's got to get on the three. And not only does she need to get on the three, she needs to run the rest of the rack. So a lot of you beginner players... We'll put that cue ball in front of the two and shoot it in the pocket and then turn around and look at the rest of the table. You've got to look at the rest of the table before you shoot. You are playing to get position on the entire rack. So give yourself a terrible angle if you need to to get in position to run out. And then if you fail from here, you can play a safety. So that's the great thing about nine ball is as long as you can see your ball, as long as you can see the next ball, you have a chance to play a safety that's going to get you ball in hand. So here she got really bad position on the three. She, I think she wanted to play it in the side pocket. And the amateur play here is to try to bank it cross side. It obviously won't go in the corner. But the professional play here is to plan on playing a safety so you want to spread out that three and that one ball in different areas and um, make your opponent try to kick at it and keep in mind guys it's a successful safety even if your opponent can kick the ball because he's not only got to kick at it but he has to kick it and not leave you a shot afterwards so of course it's better for him to not hit it at all but even if you leave it where he can hit it but not make it, he's probably going to leave you a shot, especially a table that's this wide open. So keep that in mind. It is worth playing a safety even if your opponent is going to be able to hit the ball. So I think she's going to try to park the three behind the nine here and get the cue ball uh, a little towards the middle of the table. I think she could have done a better job of spreading out the one ball I'm sorry, the, the three ball and the cue ball, because Ronnie's going to be able to kick this. But is he going to be able to kick it, make it, or kick it, and 
not leave you a shot. It looks like he can hit it from where he is. Yeah. So what he did was he put a little masse on a little um, left-hand English to spin it around that um, five ball. Looks like the five, and that allowed him to hit that ball. But still, not the worst safety in the world for um, for Pan, and she can hit this three ball. There's a chance that she will just hammer it and um, and try to make something happen. But the play would be to come in behind it, try to stun the cue ball right there by hitting it full. And there, that's a good shot. Anything that keeps your cue ball at one end of the table and your object ball at the other end uh, is a good plan. So she didn't have much control over the three because she was kicking at it, but you can see that um, Ronnie had a pretty difficult shot. So that shot could go, but it was not easy. And guys, understand that even pros at this level miss those long shots too. In fact, uh, a lot of times they'll miss long shots that you might have made because they're not just trying to make that ball, but to get in position at the same time. So he's not just playing that three. He's playing that three and getting on that four. So everything gets, all the problems get multiplied when you're now playing position. So she's on the wrong side of this four, but it's not going to be a big deal. You're just going to come around the table. Again, my favorite shot, three rails. And next thing you know, you're on the five. She likes to pull the ball up around the um, center of the table. That's her point where she can reach the shots without a bridge. So even though she could have gotten a little bit better on that five ball, it works for her. And now she's shooting down table. So let's see if she takes what the table is giving her or she tries to get a little bit more aggressive with her position on the eight. So it looks like she wants to play the eight in the same corner which is what the table's giving her. So you want to just make this shot and let the cue ball do the rest for you. So she drifts out right to the middle of the table. Great shot. Uh, any pro is out from here. You just draw it back all the way back down table. She's going to put low right hand English on it to come off this rail and give her a little bit more angle. So that, that shot's a layup for any professional to shoot that draw back. Pan is out, and now the score is 4-3. to three. Raise your hand, guys, if you remember the point where this match went south for Ronnie. So now, let's look at the next break. So I don't know who makes Ronnie's snooker cue, but that is a Predator BK2 that he's breaking with. And again, he's got that very interesting um, half rail, half table break. Uh, bridge and he just slams them uh, so Ronnie manages to make three balls and bring the cue ball back down table to him but the two ball is at the other end of the table so from this point uh, Ronnie is most likely going to have to play a safety so you see Ronnie is all the way down on the cue too the cue is literally touching his chin not necessarily something you guys want to copy, but um, I played with at least one player that played like that where the, the cue was touching his chin. Uh, you can get a, a good line of sight on the cue without putting your chin on the cue. Um, but they obviously have spent tens of thousands of hours doing that, so it is what works for them. So it looks like Pan has a... Um, a makeable shot here. But it doesn't go. So again guys, professionals, long shots, still a problem. And Ronnie has a much easier shot, but getting on that three ball is not a layup. So let's see how he handles it here. I think uh you can draw it back and get on the right hand side of the three. And 
and as aggressive as he plays and as much as he likes to um, go to that draw, that's exactly what he does. But the pocket gets in the way. So he's still not in terrible shape. He can certainly, um, this guy's, this shot, you put a little bit of left hand English on it to help you make it. And um, if you watch Strickland's commentary, he's always talking about, you got to put spin on it. You got to put spin on it to make that shot. Um, that's the shot he's talking about. Uh, you reduce the um, cut induced throw by putting outside English on the shot. I do it probably on 80% of my cut shots. Not 100%, but about 80% of them. And uh, it will help you make those difficult cut shots once you've got the English down. You're only going to put about a tip at the most of English on that shot. And it will help you make that shot, um, that cut shot, without uh, becoming a victim to the um, to the throw that is, is truly there. So Ronnie is out. He's going to move the score to five to three. And I believe it is Pan's turn to break. So let's see how she does. So Pan is going to stay on that right hand side of the table. She is making more balls from that side. And it's funny because she was making two balls on the break before and was not happy with that so she she made a shift and has been making more balls on the break now um she only made two on that break but uh almost well, no she did make three on that break so she is crushing um that break from the right hand side which is a good point guys if um if it's not working out for you on one side switch sides but um it's funny that uh, working out for her was the need to make three balls. So once again, we see what equates to a push out. Um, the two ball is at the other end of the table. And what was going on there was Pan uh, basically pushed out with the intention of um, making Ronnie have to do something really clever to get on that three ball. So now he gave the table back to her. She has to shoot at the two and is going to have to hit it. So she actually has a pretty easy safety here if she chooses to go that route. I think the score is a little too close to get aggressive and try to make it. But um, I'm just going to tap into that two ball, let it come off the rail and head back down the opposite end of the table. She should be able to leave the cue ball down the left hand side of our screen and bring the cue the two ball down to the right hand side of our screen she's putting a lot of right hand english on this so she yeah she tried to um shoot inside english and make that shot as your coach guys i'm smacking your hand when you do that that there was no need for that shot it was far too aggressive So Ronnie puts some inside, he put right hand English on that, a little force follow uh, to come off and he actually caused the ball to stall. That's why he has this bad position on that three. But it uh, worked out for him because um, he made the nine. And the, um, you know, the, the game, a nine ball will give you some of these positions that you can luck a ball in. And they are not calling the nine ball, by the way. It's the same rules that Jeanette and Pan were playing in our previous video. So, you know, the shots there, you may, you may think that it might go. If you have to call it, you call it. But you also get a lot of those rolls where you don't necessarily have to call it. So, here we have the score at 6-3. to three, And... Ronnie had a four-game lead before. Now he has a three-game lead. But the match is not over, guys. And, again, we're dealing with a situation where you're playing the best female player in the world. Um, she's at home 10 hours a day running racks. So you have to be careful at this point. So Ronnie pulls his breakout a little bit further from the rail 
probably out of comfort. He's it's such an awkward position his hand is in. Uh, he's um, he, he made two balls on the break, but does not have a shot on the one ball. The only reason neither one of them has had, to the best of my recall, uh, neither one of them has had a break and run yet is because they don't seem to be getting position on the one ball after the break. Neither one of them has had a break where they had a position on the one or the two, whichever was their first ball. So um, that's the only reason they haven't had a lot of break and runs. But he's he's going to kick this with no problem at all. I don't think he cares that he's not going to have this one ball because the two ball is kind of clustered up. So he'll kick at this shot and um, probably won't have any trouble hitting it. So he comes off of two rails very nicely. And it would have been a world-class shot with one exception. It's a foul, guys. He did not drive a ball to the rail. So where he managed to hit the one ball, and he managed to break up the cluster, which was probably not a good idea. <laughs> anyway, um, he fouled because he didn't hit the cluster. He didn't hit the one ball and send the ball to the rail. So the cue ball or the one ball or one of the other balls uh, needed to go to the rail, and he hit it way too soft. So here Pan is going to have easy position on this two ball. Getting on the three will take a little bit of finesse, but this is the kind of layout that she's probably going to run out from. So she's going to shoot this with low, no left or right English on this shot. And she comes back over to get right behind the three. That's actually the four ball, guys. Um, so she's going to roll this down with follow. Which will put her on the five. Now you don't want to get too close to the five. You see how she left her cue ball about six, eight inches off the rail. A lot of amateurs players want to line up with the shot. You don't want to get straight in. You need that rail to come out and get position on the six ball. So a little bit of high, probably a little inside to keep the cue ball near the middle of the table. And here you shoot this. I don't like that she's reaching the way she is, but she's can, she can take care of it. Um, a little bit of high on that one. I like to talk about the red zone. is the point where she can barely reach the shot in the middle of the table. You see her last two shots were in that red zone where she could barely reach it. The previous shot before the eight, she probably should have used a bridge on that six ball shot. But nevertheless, she made it and she is out and the score is six to four. Pan is going to be breaking and probably breaking from the right and there she is. I assume that's a Fury Q. That's her sponsor. Um, she makes the one ball in the side, the wing ball in the corner, two balls on the break. She's staying on that right hand side. She's definitely putting a lot of power on the break and um, also a lot of cue ball control. Now ending up on this side of the table like this is not ideal, but still the cue ball is not flying around the table like it does with a lot of players, particularly amateur players. Um, just want to crack the balls as hard as they can and next thing you know the cue ball is God knows where, sometimes on the floor. So she plays the safety on that three ball. Raise your hand if you would have shot a bank shot. So, um, again, you see a bank shot at this level, it's probably a defensive play. And um, she leaves the cue ball at one end of the table and the object ball at the other end of the table. Ronnie can easily hit this. He's going to play a very nice position here. This is not going to be... Everybody watching this, uh, pay attention. There's three balls all around each other. That is a target-rich environment. Get your cue ball behind those balls. You got three opportunities to hide the cue ball. And as you guys move up, now, intermediate and beginner players... It doesn't mean as much to you at this point to get ball in hand. But as you move up, ball in hand can equal a game. With this layout, 
the first person to get ball in hand is most likely going to run out. This is why you don't waste your time shooting um, crazy bank shots and combinations trying to um, get balls in the pocket. It doesn't matter. She could, you know, take three balls off the table right now and, and, and get ball in hand and still she's going to win the match if she can manage to get ball in hand. So um, Ronnie has left her in a very tough position. Those of you that know how to jump probably don't know how to jump like this. This is one of those very close jump shots that even some of the best jumpers um, can't make. I don't think I'm attempting this jump shot, frankly. This is one of those, um, the cue ball is just way too close to the object ball. I'm looking for multiple rail kick shot here because um, if she has to clear, if that five is in her way, and maybe it's not, so it looks like maybe she only has to clear the eight. So yeah, she only had to clear the eight ball. But if that five was in her way, even half of the ball, it's not a jump shot that you want to take. So again, she is very good with the jump cue. Um, Ronnie's going to be able to see this ball. So he plays it in the corner pocket. He has nice position on this four. You notice he doesn't take any time at all. He's just going to shoot them off. Which, by the way, guys, is not the best idea. He's not worried about the bridge. He's just going to lay down on the table. And this is a common advanced player mistake. Just getting down and shooting balls off because they're in the middle of the table. And I can get position on any of them. And let me make sure I don't foul in the meantime. And he shoots a nice, pretty cool... Um, draw off the rail to come off of two rails and now he's got to do something cool force follow high right hand English to come back down table and then what happened because I played bad patterns oh my goodness oh my goodness what did I do that would have been the match why did I shoot that force follow why didn't I shoot a better pattern because the balls are all spread out and I know I can get to them and now uh, the score is not 7-0, or 7-4, it is 6-5. Come on guys, pay attention. Run good patterns even when the balls are just laid out there for you. That's for you high rank guys. Well, good news for Ronnie, it is his break. And let's see how he does. He's going to put a little bit of stun on this to try to control the cue ball. And he does. I don't like the angle he breaks from. I don't like the bridge he uses, but he has pretty good control over that break. Uh, so he um, he makes two balls on the break. Everybody's going to make two balls, most likely. The wing ball is the seven. It goes straight in. The one ball goes straight in the side pocket. And the balls are going to be spread out, but where's that two ball going to go? So you might have to do something good here play some kind of um, nice safety uh, get behind that that three ball that might help but no let me just bang into them and see what happens so the six ball ends up going across side Ronnie takes five seconds to think about it and does a nice two rail kick shot on the two ball I think Ronnie has a plane to catch because this is a race to seven and he is going out of his way to show off half the time and just bang the balls the other half the time so um, Pan is probably going to run out from here she's got everything nice and lined up um, one or two challenges uh, might slow her down but I don't see any so she, there are a lot of people that would screw up this shot and, you know, getting on this um, four ball from the three, but she's probably not going to. I mean, made it look real easy, just come around with nice speed. If you over hit that shot, you play it in the corner. If you under hit it, you play it in the side pocket. That's a good pattern. So here she'll just stun this. 
you'll notice guys at this level nobody's hitting center ball it hasn't been a center ball shot I don't think the entire match um, you're either draw follow left right high left high right very rarely are you shooting a ball center ball even your last shot you're most likely going to hit it below center she's going to use a little outside English here a little left hand English to um, to throw the ball towards the pocket and get around the table she undershot it because that's what she, that's the way she plays these. Uh, she likes to cue ball down that end of the table with her. So she's going to put a little draw on this shot and uh, line them up nice and neat for the nine ball in the side. So there was a cut shot that she did not. She would not have used English on that shot because it would have just messed up her, posi her position. But um, she did end up on the rail, which is a bad thing but not bad enough that she's going to miss it. So now the match is tied at 6-6. Six to six. So the bad news for Ronnie is Pan is breaking, which means she is going to have control of this rack after this break, whether she has a shot or not. So she makes two balls on the break again. Uh, it looks like she has a shot on that two ball. And she's just going to roll this down, maybe a little bit of draw to get on that three in the side. So you can see it was more of a stun. It looked like a draw, but it was more of a stun because um, the ball didn't have much rotation on it, and much backspin uh, by the time she got down to get this position. she's um, Actually, that's the four ball. So she's going to draw back a little bit here to get on the five. She would have liked to be straight around on this five ball shot. This... Um, this shot you can play with high left to get um, a little bit better position on it and she just kind of taps it in with a little bit of follow this time she took what the table was giving her this shot now I play this coming off the six with draw to um, come off this rail the the long rail and she is barely reaching this shot so she's going to nudge the seven ball, which is a bad idea. It almost ends up in um, in scratch land. But she's um, got a really bad back cut here. She doesn't like the, the shot. But this is for the prize, guys. This is the last three shots of the rack. What do you do? So she's got um, a little bit of a back cut here. Nobody likes these shots but it will give her natural position on the eight as long as she doesn't scratch in the side pocket. So she's headed right for that side but manages not to scratch. So she's a little straight in on the eight but you just draw this back, come off this rail like I was talking about earlier. Uh, you want to use the rails to slow you down and she plays it off the rail perfectly. She had a little bit of um, left hand English on that just to kind of spin the cue ball into line with the nine and it is a wrap congratulations to pan hope you enjoyed it guys have a great day hit me in the comments let me know what you think thanks for watching